Do you like our theme song? <laughs> I do. I do. Uh, welcome back to Talkville, the ultimate Smallville rewatch podcast, where each week Tom Welling and I go back, way back. We watch every episode of the show that changed our lives, maybe changed yours. We discuss it with fans, and uh, it's really exciting. We've uh, we've this is our fifth episode. If you didn't get a chance to call in and leave your questions for this episode, make sure you get, get some in for future episodes. And our hotline is 213-538-2883. Uh, it, it's right there. You can see it, 213-538-2883. Uh, we'll get to questions later that people left, some voice messages, some interesting questions we'll hear. Hopefully they're interesting. Um, also on socials, uh, what are our socials? They're Talkville Podcast on Facebook. Instagram and YouTube and Talkville Pod on Twitter. That's right. So please follow us and uh, send a message to us. You know, maybe we'll, we'll probably see it. Uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's get into season one, episode five. This episode is called Cool. Tom Welling, hello, hello, my friend. Hello. I'm I'm glad to uh, talk to you about your favorite episode in the history of Smallville. Well, you know, uh, we're, we're going to get into it. Uh, I have my thoughts. I have my theories. Ryan's here. Hello, Ryan Tez. Hello, guys. You How watched both episodes? I watched this one, yeah. I uh, did. Okay. You watched yeah. cool, because uh, we, 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 we're doing two episodes today back to back, so that's why I said that. But we're, uh, we're doing uh, this episode right here called Cool. Let me just give you a little overview. The title is called Cool. It aired November 13th, 2001. That was 21 years ago. Tom, where were you 21 years ago? Doing Smallville. You were doing this I was, I was in Vancouver. <laughs> you were in Vancouver. <laughs> exactly where I was. Dumb question. The director was James Contner. Uh, writers Al Goff, Miles Miller, uh, and of course created by uh, those two, and also Superman was created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. Uh, guest star Michael Korstein as Sean Kelvin. And uh, the synopsis, obnoxious athlete Sean Kelvin draws in an icy kryptonite-infested lake. Oh, drowns. He drowns. Did I say drowns? You did. Well, he drowns. He freaking drowns. <laughs> he doesn't drown? In an icy sure kryptonite-infested lake and is resurrected with an intense need for body heat. He freezes his old girlfriend to death and sets, sets his sights on Chloe Sullivan. Um... You know, right away, you know one thing. It's going to be a freak of the week show, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, this is this is how we kick things off on the show. And, and we got into a lot of the freak of the week stuff um, throughout the series. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to get into some issues here first. I mean, it was an enjoyable episode. There was some fun stuff in there. There was some really cool effects. There's some, uh, let's just say some good moments. But, you know... I just have my my only thought is like the the lake that he, you know, he goes into him and gets kryptonite poison. He drowns. Well, why wouldn't I'm sure other people have swam in there. I'm sure that why haven't other people gotten kryptonite poisoning? I guess you have to suspend disbelief. Am I right, Tom? I mean, a little bit. Uh, maybe it's karma. Maybe it's something that the way he's been living his life, karma is coming back to him. Um Perhaps. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of positive things in this episode. In fact, I think that uh, Michael, who who played Freezer Boy, as I remember we called him, <laughs> tough role, tough role. And I think he did a good job of not like, to be honest, like over like sexualizing it, especially when everyone was calling his character that kind of guy. Right. And really, it was about love and warmth and wanting to feel, you know, this connection for human beings. I think that's the bigger or deeper um, idea behind it. And I think that the way he played it, his trajectory was really good. He could have played every scene the exact same way. I'm cold. I want heat. But there's nuances in there, especially there's, I'm jumping around, but he goes to see the school nurse and she takes his temperature and he takes the hand and he puts it on her, on his forehead. I mean, that's, he did that. I remember that was a choice he did. And that's like, you know, he was, he was really good at, um, at connecting to what it, his character really needed. So you worked with him a lot, obviously, in the show, as I saw. I didn't work with him, so I don't know these things. Yeah. But uh, I kind of just had a big fight with him. Yeah. Other than that. What do you guys think, by the way? I love to hear the message board and, like, you know, on Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff. You know, send in. We're going to talk about a lot of things, but we want to hear what you have to think, have to say and think what you have to think. 
Um, here's a little play by play of what happens in the episode. College or uh, high school Kager uh, party. Sean tries to put the moves on Chloe. Um, and uh, the football, you know, it's kind of, you know, sad. She's sort of like the sad soul that, you know, just wants someone to pay attention to her. Or just, well, <laughs> well, we see, a, we see a little bit also of her sort of pining for Clark a little bit. Yeah. Uh, reveals itself in this episode. And, and, you know, I know you're a big horror genre fan. This is classic horror genre where the kids who like to get a little freaky. Mm, doesn't work. You bad, know what I mean? Yeah. Bad. Like if you watch Fr uh, Friday the 13th. Bad things happen. You know, a guy and a girl get in the back of a van. They're both going to die. Um, <laughs> it's just the way the morality It's just the way it is. Yeah, I did yeah. like it. I mean, again, there was some cool stuff. Look, so they have a party. He tries to make the, put the moves on Chloe. The football players go to catch play catch with the football down by Crater Lake where it says no swimming. Uh, it's by, frozen. By the way, Whitney goes like this. Oops, sorry, I overthrew you. Cut to the ball is gone. That, that's what I said. <laughs> the, the ball's across the lake. Well, we said Whitney's a pretty good quarterback. Didn't we said, is he like <laughs> he's, he's getting recruited? But his arm never. He didn't even pull it back. He was like, oops. He like tossed it. Like that was just something that you know maybe the director should have picked up. But yeah, Kristen Krug is the guest on the podcast today. She's going to come on and talk to us. I don't know if she remembers doing this episode, but uh, then miraculously, uh, Sean emerges with blue skin and a need for warmth. The Kents discuss their financial problems and debt around the breakfast table. Uh, Chloe eggs Clark into asking out Lana instead of crushing from a distance. Yeah, she kind of gets you to go after Lana, to, to go for it. She She's supporting. I, I think her, her love for Clark is to encourage him to to follow his passions and, and what he's interested. In. I mean, that's, that's true love right there. Um, I also, isn't it funny that no one really saw this kid show up all blue and like possibly maybe looking anemic. Yeah. What the hell is this guy like doing nobody here? Was like, well, is that dandruff on your eyelash? Yeah, and he that? goes straight to the nurse's office. I mean, what is he doing the whole night? He just says, I'm going to go to school and see the nurse tomorrow. See what my problem is. Why don't you go to the hospital, dude? Because the school nurse is free, man. Healthcare in the United States, bro. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, here's the thing. You said he was making a choice of being nice, but at the nurse's office while being treated for being uh, for being cold, Sean discovers human touch prevents him from feeling ice cold. So, so maybe he was reaching out to her, trying to be gentle before he becomes this malevolent, you know, uh, guy. Uh, Lex comes by to talk to Martha and Kent, uh, Martha and Jonathan, offering funding for the Kents as investor at a lower interest rate than the banks. He wants to help out local farms and get Smallville back on the map as a major corn producer. Now, here we go with the disdain for Lex Luthor. You can see in Jonathan, he just makes it very apparent that he doesn't like this guy. And it's sad because it's like we don't, you know, Lex is Lex is trying to be a good guy here, but you know, he, you sound like Martha. <laughs> that's Martha exactly. was like let's give this guy a chance yeah and Jonathan knows better but at this point if he would have uh, you know kind of like uh, let Lex do his thing I think Lex would have helped him I don't think Lex had ulterior motives at this point in the series this is only episode 5 well Jonathan clearly states when he when he takes the loan from the bank instead of Lex he, you know at least he knows where he stands with the uh, with the bank and right. I think he just he doesn't he can't put his finger on Lex just yet Right. Uh, Whitney blows off Lana for plans to visit a museum for a pay-per-view fight, giving Clark an opp opportunity to ask out Lana to a Radiohead concert in Metropolis. Just as friends. Just friends. Just as friends. But you can see there's something in her eye, even though she says some things like, we're just friends, and, and we'll talk about it, but Whitney makes me feel safe, which I thought was a little bit like, hey, F you. Dude, who saved you like two or three times already? <laughs> you know? And it's like, who keeps him safe? It's like, he's like, he keeps you safe. I do. Behind. Sean gets back together with his ex-girlfriend with the intent of using her for his warmth, thus turning her stone cold. This is a shower scene where I love it because she doesn't even know who's in the house. And she's like, Sean, is that you coming in the shower? I'm like... <laughs> Did you notice that? Well, I didn't text her because they didn't have text back then, I don't think. So, yeah, that's a, it's a bit of a leap on her part. She just showed up. But I'll tell you, that was really well done. That scene was really freaky when he kisses her and she just turns all blue and just 
cr- crumbles to the floor, shatters, if you will. So I thought that was cool. Again, Smallville was really doing it up with their effects. The effects team were dynamite, especially for back then. You watch it now, some of it looks hokey, but this is 21 years ago. Ryan, did you like the effects? Do you think the effects were fun? I mean, now that I've talked to you guys about them, like especially for that reason, like yeah, I think like the the freezing of the water, like it looked it looked good. Especially for 21 years for ago. For 21 years, especially like knowing that that That's TV. Remember that, that was TV. Yeah, it was TV and it was um yeah, it was Nobody else was doing that. Top notch. I mean, if you look at the movies of that time too, like those were interesting. But like the fact that you guys were doing it on TV is yeah. impressive. Pretty impressive. That's what I thought. Uh, Sean's desperation grows more intense and leads him to call Chloe to ask her out. So he kills his girlfriend and then, or his ex girlfriend, and then goes for Chloe. And it's, you know, it kind of, it was a little, I, I guess men and women both do this when they really like someone or they just feel a little desperate or they feel alone, you know, because, you know, at the school, remember at the school where, she he comes up to her and he's, she's all smiling he's like hey you know let's and then he, he turns around and sees this other girl and goes later for you and goes to this other girl she should have been done but she wasn't done i also think that there's i think there's a part in the episode where she talks about meeting up with him as being like a like a pre-interview as to whether or not she's really going to go out with him like she's just making friends um, but I agree. I felt my my heart broke for her a little bit when he just turns and sees his ex girlfriend and like bolts. Right. And even Clark is like, uh, "What?" Yeah, that guy's kind of a dick. I thought kind of rude. And you know, it's also not her type at all. And it's just like you know the unpopular girl who's kind of like chatty Kathy who works for the school paper who doesn't have you know has you and Pete uh, Ross as friends. You know, she gets a chance to go out with a f- star football player. And, you know, I would do the same thing. I remember, like, always, I was the nerdy kid in high school hoping that, you know, my dreams were that I would get laid with the high school cheerleader. Never happened. Never. Matthew McConaughey's, uh, you know, the the role that put him on the map was him saying, I, you know, pulling up in the car and talking to the redhead. All right, all right, all right. It's that that same scenario. It is. Real real quick before we move too far off, you, you mentioned the films back then. And uh, I think it might be a little unknown fact that when we were in our production meetings and our tone meetings, we made it a point that we would not reference other television shows when we were talking about what did we do, what we wanted to do on Smallville. We only referenced movies and films. Always. It was like a rule. Right. And I think that made us think on a different level. Um, so anyway, you brought it up about the films and I didn't, I didn't want to forget to, to say that. But yeah, that was, that was our reference point it was filming. Yeah, I noticed that because a couple episodes they had, I think, a Lost Boys poster outside on the street, right? So I I see what you're saying. Uh, During the night of Chloe and Clark's dates, uh, the Kents visit Lex for his proposition, and there's nobody there. And they go, oh, we've been scammed, or this guy's, you know, he's manipulating us. And Lex just knows that if he didn't tell the Kents that other people are going to be there, they would never have come, which is true. So he's trying to get in their good graces and show them you know hey listen i want to help you but uh you know it's it's a it's a it's a tough climb you know it's you know the little nuance i like in that scene um is a callback to the conversation that jonathan jonathan and martha had where after all of that and, and jonathan's like i knew this i knew this would happen he says i guess we're here to listen because of his conversation with his wife and i thought that was a that shows character and it shows relationships um that i think uh there's a lot of that in this series, which is, I think, why it survives. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but is this like the first time you start, they start putting Lex in like some serious purple getups? Yes. This is like the first the episode. That of that. I- the, my attire, they tend to give me purple. Because that's um, like the that's the classic Lex color, but this is the first time I actually noticed it, probably because you had this like V-neck sweater going on. Did I? I didn't even notice it. But the purple? Do you know you're wearing purple? I'm colorblind. I know. But do you know you're wearing purple? I, I do because they tell me. They would tell me that I wore a lot of purple. Do you know why Lex wears purple? No. It's the color of royalty. It always has been. Uh, really? Because way back in the day, purple was the hardest color to make from, you know, I'm talking about like Egyptian times and stuff. So if you had purple, you were somebody. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Huh. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Whether you're struggling with grief, relationships, or stress, 
or are having trouble sleeping or meeting goals, online therapy might be right for you. BetterHelp is secure online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with a licensed professional therapist. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own accredited therapist. Therapists have a broad range of expertise which may not be available in your area. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. It's much more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available. Visit betterhelp.com slash talkville and join the nearly 3 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Talkville listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash talkville. Betterhelp.com slash talkville. Talkville is brought to you by Policy Genius. Why get life insurance? Well, we pay hundreds of dollars per year to protect our homes, our cars, and even our phones, but too many of us aren't taking steps to protect our families' finances. Mortgage payments, private student loans, and other types of debt don't just disappear if something happens to you. A life insurance policy can provide your loved ones with a financial cushion they can use to cover those costs. And it can provide you with peace of mind that even in a worst-case scenario, they'll be protected. Already have coverage through work? Having life insurance through your job may not be enough. Most people need up to 10 times more coverage to properly provide for their families. And coverage through work isn't portable. If you leave your job, the policy doesn't go with you, meaning a gap in coverage when you need it most. Why get covered now? Life insurance typically gets more expensive as you age. So it's smart to get a policy sooner than later. Worried about price? By making it easy to compare your options from top companies, Policy Genius can help you make sure you're not paying a cent more than you have to for the coverage you need. Policy Genius is an insurance marketplace that makes it easy to compare quotes and top companies in one place to find your lowest price on life insurance. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Options start at just $17 per month for $500,000 in coverage. Just click the link in the description or head to policygenius.com to get personalized quotes in minutes and find the right policy for your needs. Policy Genius doesn't add on extra fees. Your personal info is private. Policy Genius doesn't sell your details to third parties. Policy Genius has thousands of five star reviews across Google and Trustpilot. Policy Genius has options that offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Since 2014, Policy Genius has helped over 30 million people shop for insurance and placed over $150 billion in coverage. Head to policygenius.com to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. Uh, when Clark finds out that the police are looking for Sean, he ditches the date with Lana to go save Chloe from her date with him. Um... Back at the school, Sean corners Chloe inside the school pool area, tries to freeze her out to consume her body heat. By uh, the way, Chloe falls in the pool and for, jumps out of the pool and screams, Clark. She has- <laughs> <laughs> I didn't you notice know, that. Clark! Just, Clark. <laughs> Just like, like Clark's going to be there. Like, Mom, Dad. No, nope. Clark. Maybe that's because she has such a crush on you and innately has this fixation for you that, you know, it was the first thing she thought of was like, where's my Clark? I love my Clark. Maybe that was the, you know, that's what we're supposed to believe. And I thought the freezing of the pool was pretty cool. Again, I thought that, what did you think, Ryan? Yeah, I thought that looked pretty good. And then, you know, the, I like that, you know, her, her foot gets stuck at the end. Again, like it's right. another, like, it feels very horror movie-esque. Yeah. But what about when Clark just punches through the ice? Does she not notice that he did that? I mean, it's right there in front of her. <laughs> she's she's panicked. She's panicked. She's, really she's freaked him. out. Again, what we have to do here is suspension of disbelief. This is we're adults now uh, analyzing this show. I mean, I don't. I I consider you guys adults, but uh, so I get it. Sean escapes, heading over to the local power plant to con- uh, consume the electrical energy to stay warm, <laughs> which I found pretty delightful. Uh, electrocuting himself. He, I guess he was fine. Whitney picks up Lana after quickly ending the date with Clark. The two drive home as Whitney expresses his frustration with her, seeing another guy with her in the, uh, where, uh, when in the middle of the road. Sean pops out, makes them swerve and crash. The two escape the scene on foot to the nearby Luther Manor. And at the Luther... Somehow. What? 
Yeah, they're so, just they just happen to be like right around the corner from Lex Luthor's house. Like we'll go there because we wanted to get everybody at Lex again. You know, you're suspending disbelief. And at the Luther Mansion, Lex is trying to convince the apprehensive Jonathan of his silent ownership investment. Blah blah blah. Clark arrives on the crash scene to look for Lana and is sent into a frozen sleep as Sean sucks the warm from him. Now I thought that he was going to be not be able to do this because you're a superhero. I thought um, I was expecting that because I didn't remember what happens. Weren't you, Sean? Like, oh, he can't. He's not going to be able to do this because it's it's Clark Kent. Well, then he, he says it later that he gets like uh, like a he serious. He gets a real buzz from Clark. That's he doesn't true. know why. He but does because, say that. He's like, God, you tasted good, Clark. You would think that. A, it wouldn't work or two, he would explode. Somehow. Um, <laughs> but this is also why for the rest of the for the next nine and a half years, Clark never lets anyone touch him because of that. <laughs> uh, Clark wakes up to save the day and his family by causing Sean to freeze over in the lake. Now, uh, what what did you guys overall? What did you think? Ryan, we'll start with you. Uh, and the Rosenbaum scale of things, the rose, three roses, the rose, uh, a heater down the middle. Uh, uh, what would you think when you watch this episode? Comparatively to the others, uh, comparatively, uh, wasn't stoked on it the most. Uh, yeah. uh, it was fine. Now that now that we're talking about it, I'm I'm liking it more. Um, it was you know it was all right. Uh, I think you know there was it was lacking in the action. Maybe it was because of there wasn't really mu- there wasn't really much to fight for Clark. Right. It was just a guy who gets who gets cold, and what really can you do with it other than just sh- launch him into a into a lake? Right. Well, freeze let, himself let me, out. Let me let me put in two cents real quick. If you take the if you take the storyline of Freezer Boy out of it, right? Just take him out of it. You get a lot of cool character relationship stuff between Clark and Lana, Chloe trying to figure out who she is, Lex, Lex the parents, Lex, Lex, Lex and the right? Parents. Um, Clark and Lex, the funny, you know, the thing with the tickets was really funny. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of sort of core character stuff that actually happens this episode. And if you, you got to remember if Clark and Lana are in high school and Chloe's in high school, this kind of stuff happens, you know, oh, I have a boyfriend. I'm stable. He keeps me safe, but I'm not, you know, I'm lacking something. He, he doesn't encourage me to, to, to grow. Yeah. And yeah. Maybe maybe Clark can, you know, and Clark's like, well, I don't want to be too, you know, I don't want to be that guy. So I, I think there's a lot in this episode beyond just the freezer boy element. And also, I like that Lex is really I mean, even though it's a little creepy because he's a little older, we've talked about it. But you know, at the same time, he's he, look, I get it because Lex, Clark saved Lex's life. So maybe that's why Lex is just there's this curiosity he has, obviously. Yeah. With with Clark. And also that he wants to help him now since Clark helped him. So he is looking out and he's like, you know, I don't like that she's with this quarterback. He's a douchebag. Clark, I'm going to get you this girl. I'm Lex Luthor. I can do anything. Well, and every single person in Lex's life is trying to take from him, steal from him. And you're not. Him, Clark's not. Including his father. And I think that's what he sees. I think that's what Lex sees in Clark is a goodness that I think Lex has it too, which is why he can identify it. And I think he was trying to encourage that. Yeah, I agree. And this is true. I mean, the the relationships in this, like, there were a lot of good pairings in it. Like, there were, like, there were, uh, what, Pete, Chloe, and and Clark had like friendship walks where they talk about their their relationship problems, and that felt like a very high school thing to do. Yeah. Uh, and then you got paired with Martha and Jonathan. Right. It's like the adults in the room are going to talk, and like, yeah, I- I'm going to wear this, this hot sweater. Yeah. And it just, it, there was some feelings in this episode. Like you really had some, you know. I stoked the fire in my hot sweater. <laughs> <laughs> but you felt for Chloe when she says, maybe you guys should treat me better. Yeah. You know, it was kind of like nice. It's like, you know, you feel for her. You're like, hey, I just want to find some guy that likes me or find someone that likes me for who I am. And, you know, she shot down again. She picks the wrong guy because this guy had ulterior motives and just wanted to kill her for <laughs> I mean, if you want to think about it, um, we're going to get to our guest here. Uh, she should be on. Kristen should be on here in a second. But then we're going to get to some questions that you had and uh, interesting things of note. Uh, Sean Kelvin's name is not to the unit of temperature. Kelvin. He wasn't Sean Fahrenheit. 
That would have been really cool. <laughs> uh, when Clark Kent and Chloe Sullivan first arrive at the party, Chloe is talking about how cold it is out there, to which Clark replies, it doesn't feel that cold to him. Chloe's response is, what? Are you from an ice planet? It's freezing. A hat tip to the ice planet that Clark is from krypton did you get that of course you got that uh i didn't i didn't i didn't get it while we were filming it uh, <laughs> is that uh, true and that that reaction that clark has is like huh, huh? what <laughs> see that's i mean but that's the other thing is you have to understand that you know there's a lot of moments that clark could have said or did something different but um he wasn't that guy he you know he wasn't that guy yet he wasn't you know if he could have gone Oh, um, I don't know what you're talking about, Frozen Planet, you know, but yeah. that's not the, that's all we did. Also, something cool that I didn't pick up on, you know, Lex mentions Clark is like a, the little brother he's never had. But as the series goes on, you'll see that there was, he did have a brother, Julian, and he was killed as a young boy, which we'll get into later, later, much later on. But so he really never had that younger brother, and he obviously doesn't open up and talk about it now, but a little foreshadowing, if you will um chloe mentioning a certain follically challenged individual helping clark is was funny it was it was cute little you know stab at lex luther and his baldness um i love a uh, cool effect idea of sean's hand touching the shower sprinkler and turning the hot water into hail that was uh i thought that was pretty cool another cool effect um Chloe in the school, the sound of the phone connection interfering with the internet, internet connection is a blast from the past. <laughs> uh, seeing call, uh, Sean calling Clark's mom hot, play on words because he wants her warmth. Uh, these are just things that I just, you know, I, I noticed. Um, you know, and this is a good time before we get into any other boring no, no, notice uh, little things that I found. Uh, guess who's here? <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, live. We might have a, if you're if you're dealing with sound, if it's a little off, we apologize because there's an echo and we can't figure it out. So you're just gonna have to deal with it, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and it's ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like a- your Lana Lang is here, and that's Kristen Crew. Kr- Kristen, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, what a treat! What a treat! You know, we're, we're reviewing today. We're reviewing an episode called Cool. I remembered the cards. I think it's because you couldn't remember your line. The playing cards. I think it was written on the playing card. What, six of hearts or whatever it is? I couldn't remember. Yes, Tom, you wrote your lines <laughs> I on a card. Was there, but I'm pretty sure there was something. <laughs> yes, totally threw you under the bus. I love it. You used Tom one of the- I remember his line. What card do I have? So Tom's uh, in the- <laughs> So Tom's in a limo, guys, and he and he's uh, he gives her he says pick a card, and then he says, oh, it's the three of hearts, and she's like, oh my gosh, and you know he knows magic, but really he has X-ray vision. Yeah, well, thanks for being here, Kristen. It was really yeah. nice, Kristen. <laughs> it was a real treat. Welcome, Kristen. Ultimately, um, what do you remember, if anything? Do you remember working with the guy Michael, who was the cold guy? Do you remember? Well, yeah, I don't think I you had scenes with, with him. You had Whitney uh, and Clark scenes. Oh yeah, I this feel was. Like I remember that guy's name. Yeah, but Whitney, remember, got you. Uh, you're supposed to go to some art show or whatever, and then he has did something with. This happened every episode. So how would you remember that? No, this is epic fail, and this is early. This is the first time you kind of get to see behind the curtain of their relationship. And like, here's Lada. You know, um, they made this plan, and this dude shows up, and he's like, "Oh, I got pay per view with my buddy." And it's like, and Lana is that goes, what Whitney said? Yeah, what a <laughs> dick. And Lana goes, that's okay. Culture can wait. <laughs> Welcome to the early 2000s. <laughs> you know what's funny, though, Kristen, is they had a scene. Clark, uh, Clark's offhand comment to Lana, whenever the world gets disappointing, you retreat into a book. It might line up with your personality in a way how you do enjoy books and fiction and kind of you like to disappear. So that was a little Kristen moment in a way, wasn't it? Or, or, yeah, I guess so. or Kristen just likes books. I never saw Kristen like, oh, and like run away and dive behind a book. <laughs> no, but she'd rather be in a book than talk to us. <laughs> Back then, that's probably true. Yeah. It was a nice safe spot to go. And maybe that actually, maybe the writers took something from me in that moment. I don't know. Not well, that they will- were really on set. I do many, 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 many times. I remember we'd, you know, we'd walk away from set and, you know, we have our chairs there and there's craft service. 
And on Kristen's, more times than not, on Kristen's uh, chair would be like a book for it, like thick, like not, not a, <laughs> not a, oh, I'm going to get through this today. This is like a, I'm, a meaty two inch book. Um, yes, we sat around all the time. I had to do something. Also, it's scary to talk to people. So reading is nice. Kristen, what do you remember about the early days, the early episodes? Do you, do you remember like just kind of being nervous and kind of just like, oh, my God, this is overwhelming? What do you remember? I remember being scared a lot of the time. Uh, um, I remember I was always in some peril. I remember a lot of rain towers and cold concrete because um, I was on the concrete quite a bit, I think. You remember all the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, um, but yeah, I do, the early days are, are tough. Like I, I, it's funny. I do remember that scene in the limo though. And I don't know why I remember that doing, I don't remember the context of that scene, but I remember being in the limo with you and I remember the cards. So there must've been something that, And I feel like it was because we wrote something on the cards. Um, you disagree. That's fine. Were you still I living? I haven't seen the scene, so I don't know how many lines you actually I, I, have. In I, I, I don't recall, Your Honor. Were you still living at home, Kristen, at this time? In season one? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So you got to My go dad home would at drive night. me to work. Your sometimes. dad would drive you to work. Yeah, because I don't know if you remember, but transport uh, wasn't allowed to drive me. And I didn't have a car. So... so I wouldn't take the bus to work and then I got a stalker and then they wouldn't let me take the bus to work, but they wouldn't drive me. It Why, was just, you didn't want your stalker to give you a ride. He was always there outside. <laughs> Jeez, Tom low, <laughs> but wait, so you had a stalker in season one. I, I vaguely remember that season one or season two. It was early on anyway. And, um, and then we got our security. Did he ever show up to set? I don't think so. No. Thank God. Was Other there, people showed up to set. Did they send security to your house or? No, we got security on set. On set, yeah. On, in part because of that. Yeah, I remember them being like, oh, you know, this is a big cost to production. And I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. so is us like getting killed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. On, absolutely. So Kristen, what are, the, what are the times that you do remember? Like the good times on set or do you remember, is there, are there anything... Is there anything like in particular that you kind of re recall about making, you know, having a good time or being in a yeah, moment? I remember like any day I was riding horses was a good day. Yeah. I love doing all of that stuff. It was so much fun. It was so much. And working with the horses always made me laugh because they always made a scene incredibly difficult. They'd always nudge us and it was always funny. Um, and I, and I loved, I loved that. I was so happy that I got to do that. What do you do when you look back and you see yourself as Lana Lang now, like back then, do you, is, is it weird to see yourself saying, cause I watch myself and I'm like, Oh my God, you were so young. Look how you look at your teeth. Look at your skinny face. Look at your, not you, me, but what do you, what, do, know, you, what do you look at? What do you, is it, is it weird? Yeah. Honestly, I haven't watched anything from that far back in a while, but it's always my voice. I mean, obviously I look young mm -hmm. and I'm really, really young, but my, my, you can tell I'm scared yeah. because my voice is so small and really high. And I don't have a high voice. Like it's just, it's not, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just it's so little. Like I just, I mean, well, it's I, kind I, of. I also remember you, um, you know, you, you were, you were, you were making efforts not to sound Canadian. And so there was a management yeah. there as well. Like it, I, we just watched the episode and the scene with you and Whitney, you're right. It's a small, almost like thoughtful way that you're talking, which somehow resonates as Lana being thoughtful, but it, a part of it is you, you know, trying to work on your O's, you know what I mean? Or And I didn't even have a strong accent, but I remember one day on set, Beeman just like <laughs> made me run words in front of a whole crew. <laughs> Good. just like yeah like say this say that like and it was and i and my accent isn't like ontario accent so and my mom never had a canadian accent so it was never super super thick but i definitely that's an interesting thing i hadn't thought that maybe i was thinking about that at the time but but it's entirely possible until i got used to it which would have taken a while did you, uh, when did you realize the impact of the show? Was it the stalker or was it, when was it that you felt like, holy shit, this is bigger than me. This is bigger than the sh uh, anything I've ever done. 
I'm a person who really values my anonymity. And it was when I, when I didn't have it. The, the minute I would walk down the street and people would know who I was. I was like, holy, I'm on a, this is a, a big show. Right. And you didn't like that. Well, no. and you were, you were also off, just got off a show. Or like at the same time you were shooting that other show. I was doing both shows at the same time. Edgewood? I would go, I would work on Smallville and then I would work on the other show um, at the CBC on the weekends. So I would so you, kind of go back and forth. So how, how old are you at this time? 19, 19, so 19 20, 21. 19, 20, 21, you have, you're on two successful <laughs> running television shows and surprised that people are noticing. Yeah, I'm, I was a dodo. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes we don't think that far ahead. We don't think that it's possible that all of a sudden we're going to, you know, be like, you know, you're going to jump into stardom and like all of a sudden everybody's going to notice you. Most shows aren't that big. <laughs> they don't. And also, I don't think I don't. It's such out of the realm of possibility. It's like, especially growing up when we when I did, when we did, they're just you didn't know what celebrity looked like and you didn't know what it meant to be like that there were there were degrees of celebrity and it just i just never really thought deeply about it and what it would mean for my life well i think also and and i feel like i was i'm this way as well i, I wasn't chasing it i i, I wasn't yeah, exactly yeah so you know if it could just as easily had been why aren't more people recognizing you? john schneider said something to me once he said you know the only thing worse than people recognizing you at the airport and i was like what he goes nobody recognizing <laughs> nobody you. recognizing you yeah, and i was like oh, okay i mean yeah john liked to be recognized i mean i think it's nice to be recognized it's but again but like Kristen's a different breed she's like she's always been someone who doesn't like that the limelight even though she's you know she chose a career in it i feel i'm, I'm speaking for you but since by talking to you so much i realized that it's like hey you love you like to act you like to do these things and it's a job but there are things that come with it sometimes and you have to deal with those things. Like for me, it was one thing, but I do think like for Tom, for you, it would have been even, it would have been crazy because I'm, I would get a different kind of, I was, I was a damsel in distress. So a lot of my more uncomfortable fan experiences were with males who wanted to save me. Whereas with you, I feel like you got, you would have gotten a lot of people who wanted to fight you that, or that, there would, happened. like, I just think it would have been a very different. <laughs> I didn't know where that was going. That, that, fight, <laughs> you. <laughs> fight you. And the other thing too. <laughs> well, he was married then or he was getting married. You remember going to Tom's wedding? Yeah, I remember that. That was a great wedding. That was I beautiful. So burnt. It was wonderful. So Ate lobster that. on the beach. <laughs> Yeah, you guys made a little little trip out of it. Yeah. It well, was... listen, we don't want to take any more of your time. We we well, we, we'd love you to come back uh, sometime down the road, a couple of times. You know, just for pop in for 15, 20 minutes if you would do that. We, yeah, we I'll like... remember more about episodes the further you get through this process. Season, <laughs> well, you... still, this is still season. Did you one. hear the word process? See, that's a Vancouver word or a Canadian thing. That's Canadian process instead I of process. I never know which one is which. Yeah. But do you think it's weird, lastly, that Tom and I are doing a rewatch show called Talkville about rewatching old episodes of Smallville? Do you think it's weird? Yeah, I, I guess it is surprising. By the way, la again, I said lastly, but who was your favorite that you can remember guest star that you can remember that you really loved working with? Can you remember one guest star that you just in particular? I always liked working with, I forget her name right now, the actress who played Aunt Nell. I really liked working with oh, her. Oh, yeah. Aunt Nell. What was her name? Who is that, Ryan? Aunt Michael, Nell. Michael likes Canadian working actor. with her, too. I liked her. I always had a crush like on her. She working with a lot of women on our show. No, I never went out with any of them, but I liked, I liked, I always thought she was attractive. She was an older woman. And the funny thing is, is she was probably, <laughs> she's probably 15 years younger than I am now when we started that show. Yeah, she probably was. What was her yeah. name? Sarah Jane Redmond. Sarah Jane Redmond. Sarah Jane, yes. How she's old is she? I really, I mean, it's not, it's not on IMDb. It's not on IMDb. Those scenes that you had with her, they resonate. I mean, both of you, both characters come into those scenes with so much weight and so much misunderstanding, but wanting to connect with each other. And, and those, you know, as we watch these episodes, I'm reminded that like, those are tough scenes, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that might be why I liked working with her, that, that that was always a little bit more personal and it was not uh, as much in service of another character. Um, but yeah, 
I also think it's funny, and you guys will talk about this, I'm sure, that both of the Ashmore twins were on our show. Yeah. Playing different characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and no one mentions it. <laughs> They're like, oh, that guy looks a lot like that other guy. Yeah, they were good. They were good. I like working yeah, with those Clark guys. Yeah, Clark isn't like, you remind me of someone. Yeah, he's in last a season. Lot <laughs> like, uh, this, I forget what that guy's powers were. Well, anyway, listen, this has been a real okay, treat. Yes. Thank you for coming on here and just briefly talking with us. It was just a nice little... It was a nice little moment. We really appreciate you, Tom. Yes. Yeah, enjoy your podcasting. All right. We love you. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye, crew. All right. Now the sound's better. You notice suddenly it's brilliant now. And that was terrible sound, wasn't it? Oh, that was funny. All right. We're going to quickly go through this stuff. So look, we have some questions now. Uh, and uh, these are questions that you guys, uh, you guys asked. So uh, we're going to answer them. Here we go. Hey guys, this is Ben. Right now I'm in Oklahoma. Love the show. Thought this was a great episode. My question is for you, Tom. In this episode, you see several uh, super speed moments, and I was just wondering, what do they have you actually do on camera when you're supposed to be super speed? So that's a very good question. It was a work in progress throughout many years. Um, I would have to run the whole way. And I would have to stop on a mark, not be sweating and not be having and not having deep breaths. I mean, I would I remember one time I ran like a block and a half and it took a couple episodes to realize I could have walked that. Because Seriously. They, they ramp it up in the camera later. I could have walked it. But there's something about <laughs> getting into your mark and hitting that mark and looking around and an energy to it that, that we had to embrace. But by the end of the season, by the end of the series, we did get it to where the stunt double would run all the way down the street through the mark. And then I would stand like five steps back and just sort of do like, in some ways, Michael, you appreciate this, like a Keanu where I would like Keanu Reeves, where I would just sort of like, and you know, make it seem like <laughs> make it there. All right. And a lot of that has to do with production time and, and, and effort, but yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Here we go. That question two. <laughs> hey, Tom. Hey, Michael. This is Brendan from California. I love the show you guys are doing. Thanks so much for doing it. My uh, my question is for the both of you. I was thinking, what was it like working with these single episode guest stars, like uh, the guy who played Sean in this episode? Would love to hear what the experience was like for you guys, but also what you think the experience was like for them while filming Smallville. Thanks. Can't wait to hear. Love the show. Keep it up. All right. Bye. Michael, I know that, I mean, every episode I worked with a guest star, I'm not sure you did every episode. I was in every episode. No, you didn't work with a guest star every episode. Mm, no. As far as like you Not every episode. I didn't have to. You, usually I had I was working with Lionel Luther or was working with you or working with, you know, I, I did have get a lot of guest worked with a lot of guest stars, but I didn't get to work with him. But we talked about this on the episode and you thought he was a really nice guy. He made interesting choices and he tried to make the character a little more vulnerable. Well, and, and to, to more specifically to answer that question quickly is thank God for these uh guest stars that would come up they would bring energy they'd be rested they'd be ready to go they they wanted to do good, do good performances and i could feed off that yeah because i was there all the time and i needed that energy um so i loved working with the guest stars i love it i love it jennifer portland oregon i'm sure when these episodes started airing you guys knew it was a hit so i'm wondering when you got further into the first season when did you guys find out that you were picked up for a second season thanks love you guys when were we picked up for a second season? When we, I don't think they told us till the summer. No, it was very, um, especially when we became the the most successful uh, television show on the network for many years. They still, we would be canceled at the end of each season. They'd wait a month and a half to bring us back. And it was confusing because we couldn't make plans or, or plan on anything. Um, it's just the way the business works. Yep. Uh, nowadays, it's different. Now, it's, series are getting like four season pickups right off the bat and stuff like that. But back then... We were canceled at the end of every season. Yep. The phone number is 213-538-2883. Leave your messages. Make them brief. Make them maybe a little louder. Uh, Right now, we're going to go to Ryan's favorite uh, scene. Uh, We're going to choose Ryan's favorite scene. There was that scene where, uh, yeah, where where, where Lex gives Clark the the tickets. The tickets, right. uh, Sort of for the emotional aspects that we were saying. Right. You know, there was uh, the the brother line and then... uh, you finally see Lana and Clark get to have a little moment. Right. Maybe there's a spark. Maybe. Is there? Is there? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
Uh, and then there was the scene where um, Chloe gets chased by Sean. Um, just like ar- around the around the pool. Around the pool, chases him. Okay, so that scene. I thought that was a good scene. It was a good save. It was, uh, it was all, all right. right. And what's the last scene? Uh, the last scene uh, was the Lex, Martha, and Jonathan scenes. Oh. Chloe Pool. Okay, wh- what do you think? Chloe Pool. You're going to go with Chloe Pool. Yep, I know he likes action. And he didn't get enough of it in this episode he mentioned earlier. <laughs> I'm going to say... Yeah. And he had trouble recalling number one and number three, but he was I, very easily talked about Chloe. You know, I'm going to take, okay. take a shot in the dark. I'm going to say the Lex scenes. What's the answer? I was reading off my phone. Uh, I'm, it was the Lex scenes for yeah! me this time. Oh my God, I got it. <laughs> Ryan's favorite. That was the first one out of the first got five episodes that we got right. Well, it, it it felt like an acting tour de force. It felt like you were with the heavy hitters. Um, what do you mean of, I was with the heavy hitters? You, the, you, they were with them. I can, uh-huh. Come on. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, it felt like it, it did feel like it. He, these are the adults in the room talking. You were trying to like story wise, you were trying to insert yourself in the Kents. Uh, yeah. And honestly, if I'm being honest, most of it was the purple sweater. <laughs> it was a wardrobe choice. You love it. Lot, well, because this was it was the uh, it was a lot of <laughs> it was a lot of status. It was a wardrobe choice. Shout out to the wardrobe department for that one. Shout out. Shout out. It was bold. All right, last and not least, uh Rosenbaum rating. What are you going to give this one, Ryan? What how did it work again? 3 <laughs> roses the best, 2 rows, 1 rose, heater is down the middle, uh neither here or there, then there's one bomb, two bomb, three bombs. What is it, Ryan? Just be honest. Whatever down the middle is. That's a heater. Right. Ryan gives it a heater. What do you give it? I give it a one. One rose. I just think that, you know, I, w- the way I like to think about this is if someone never saw Smallville and I had to show them five episodes, this would not be one of them. Right. I agree with you. I w- I'm going to give it a heater like Ryan did. I'm actually going to give it, uh, I'll give it, I'll give it, I'll give it uh, a heater right down the middle. No rose, no bomb, just kind of right in the middle. Uh, that's it. I'm glad we had a guest. Sorry about the sound. We had some difficulties, but we couldn't keep working on the sound because we were going crazy. But uh, until we see you again, at the next episode, we need, we need you guys to watch and then call in with questions. And don't forget, the hotline is 213-538-2883. And leave us a message. Tell us if you have any questions about the episode, and we will try to recap what we remember. Um, we want to take the discussion online. So, you know, go on the Twitter um, go on the Instagram, all that stuff. Uh, Talkville podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Talkville pod on the Twitter. Um, hopefully by this point we have a Patreon, so you can go to our Patreon. <laughs> uh, I think that's going to happen soon. Um, and that's really it. Overall, I mean, you know, we I gave it a heater. Ryan gave it a heater. Tom gave it a rose. Tom's a little more giving or forgiving. Which is fine. Which is totally I just, fine. I, I, I mean, I think if you listen to the podcast, I, I saw a little more in the episode than you guys did. Good. Yeah, well, you enjoyed it a little more. I, 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 I did not enjoy it. Um, but hey, we really appreciate you, Tom. It's always good talking to you. Next week's Hourglass. I remember that one. I remember liking that one a little more. I remember this one was one that I, I recall going, hey, there's a little bit of a story here. There's kind of a, you know, it was a little bit, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into Hourglass. It's, it, there's many layers to the storyline, which, yes. which is really cool. Which Very we will get into, which we will get into. All right. From myself, Michael Rosenbaum. Tom Welling. Ryan over here in the corner. <laughs> That's Ryan. Until next time, guys, uh, put your uh, underoos on, your small, your Superman underoos and jump down the stairway. That's what I used to do as a kid in a robe, actually. Naked except for a robe. But we don't need to Are get into that. Are we still recording this? Are we still recording? All right. We'll see you. And of course, we can't forget our shout outs to our top tier patrons. Uh, go to patreon.com slash talkville to become a patron. And we appreciate all the support. We need you. We love you. And here are the shout outs for Patreon. Tom, take it away. Nikki G, Leanne P, Raj C. San Diego M, Suzanne B, Leah S. Little Lisa, Callie D, Tom T. Mark A, AJ underscore 800, Sophie M. Betsy D, Liliana A, Abhi P. Meg K, Chris F, Kimberly E. Michael H, Ray H, Karen M. Design OTG, Danielle B, 99 more. Lalani N, Catherine P. 
Brett G. Super Sam. Always S. Feral T. Ken J. Estefan G. DJ Kento. Garrett W. Just J. Tyler H. Kimberly L. Danny G. Teresa. Justin S. Eric W. Tom N. Juan V. Tony V. Rodolfo J. Jason W. Osama A. Osama. Osama A. Nancy D. (laughs) Artoon K, Justin O, Tristan C, Adam S, Jeremy G, Anna M, Amanda R, Brandy S, Teddy one two seven, Michael P, Benjamin P, Ryan R, and Grumpy Itis. Good old Grumpy Itis. Uh, thank you to all our patrons again. Thank you. You make this uh, show possible. Keep watching. Thanks for the support. We love you. And uh, we're just about to do some bonus material for patrons. So again, if you want to join Patreon, go to patreon.com slash talkville. Get your name shouted out. Tom, we'll see you later. Yeah, thanks, bud.